So you are all welcome to our live stream for today. As we discussed last time, I said today we'll be looking at uh, the everyday mathematics part of your syllabus, which is uh, the 2024 20, uh, JAM UTME syllabus. So we'll be taking the second part, which has to do with fraction, decimal, approximation, and percentage. The last time we discussed, we talked on uh, we discussed on fractions, we discussed on decimal, we discussed on significant figures, and also we discussed on decimal places. So today we'll be taking the other part of everyday mathematics, which is the part we'll be discussing today. And I know you're going to learn a lot from today's class as we'll be looking at percentage error we we'll look at percentage error, we we'll look at simple interest, we're we'll going to look at uh, profit and loss percent, and then we're we'll going to look at uh, uh, ratio proportion, and if we have more time, we'll consider rate. Now, this is the second topic on your, uh, on your syllabus, and that is under the number and numeration. So we'll go straight to uh, looking at the first part of this discourse will be looking at, uh, at uh, the first part, which is uh, percentage error. And at the end of this class, you should be able to deal with problems on percentage error. You will look at problems on percentage error. You will be able to uh, solve some problems. If you are giving a jam question or CBT question, you'll be able to solve some jam question on uh, on uh, simple interest. We're also going to look at how we can solve questions on profit and loss and percentage. And then we'll look at how we can solve problem on ratio, proportion, and rate. So at the end of today's class, you should be able to solve questions on this part. Now, the first part we are going to look at, generally, they are all called everyday mathematics. Now, on this everyday mathematics, we talk about uh, profit, interest, uh, we talk about percentage. And when we talk about everyday mathematics, we're going to look at, we call them everyday mathematics. So this comprise of percentage. We're going to look at percentage error. That's the first one. We're going to look at uh, interest, that's simple interest. We're going to look at profit and loss. We're also going to look at uh, rates and ratio. This is profit and losses. We're going to look at rates, ratio, rates, I will look at proportion. So why do we call these everyday mathematics? We call these everyday mathematics because every day we feel in our day by day life, we see all these, we interact with these and we make good use of all these. So we call them everyday mathematics. So in your job examination, you'll be seeing things like this, questions like this. They are very simple, but if you don't know them, they are going to take a whole lot of your time and you find out that the time you should have used solving all that difficult question, you spend them on these easy and uh, easy questions. You can just look at, apply the formulas and off you go. Now, to start with, let's consider the first part we are going to look at percentage error. So everyday mathematics, all these are aspects of mathematics uh, we see in our day-by-day -day life. Now let's concentrate more on percentage error. And that's the first part we are going to, uh, we're going to look at. Where is my, where is the, good. So let's look at uh, the percentage error.
So we are going to consider the percentage error. Now, when we talk about percentage error, percentage error usually occurs when you compare something to the original, to the original length. It can be length, it can be size, it can be original estimate of that thing. So it occurs when we make an estimate of a result. Since we do not have or know the exact value of that result. So when you don't know the exact value of a result, you say, okay, let's say plus or minus three, that is percentage error. So that is usually done when we don't know the right result of any what of any given figure. Now, mathematically, how do we write percentage error? When we are given percentage error mathematically, how do we look at percentage error? Now, percentage error usually have a base and the base is the actual result. While the other part is the estimated what? The estimated result you have. So the error will always be equal to, when dealing with percentage error, you first of all consider the error. The error is always equal to the actual is always equal to the actual result you get or actual value minus the estimated what? Estimated value or results. Now, that is why I said we see uh, everyday mathematics in our day by day world life. You can just say, tell someone, um, I don't really know the actual figure. The actual figure can be uh, 34 or 35, but this is the estimated figure. That is error. So when we are calculating error, we look at, we consider the, we consider the, the actual value and then the estimated value. And then when we want to now calculate the percentage error, remember percentage might, must be multiplied by what? By 100. So the percentage error, will now be equal to the error, which is the value you get from this, divided by the actual value, multiplied by what? By 100. And that value, that will give you your what? Your percentage error. Now take note in your exam, some questions they might decide to ask you and they will ask you to calculate the error. They will ask you to calculate the percentage error. Some students will go ahead to make mistakes and then go ahead to calculate the percentage error. Now, I want to make this, this uh, interaction, this uh, uh, online class, very, very interactive. Once we discuss this percentage error, we're going to go straight in looking at a very first jam question on percentage error. Now, let's look at a question. Let's select a question from uh, the jam pass question on percentage error. Good, I have a question here. And what does the question say? The question says a student, let me write out the question. The question says a student A student measures a piece of a group and found that it was It was 1.26 meter long. Then the question says, if the actual length of the rope was 1.25 meters. It says, what was 
was the percentage error in the measurement. Now, you see that question. That question says a student measures a piece of land and found out it was 1.26 meters long. If the actual length of the piece of land is 1.2 meter, what was the percentage error? Now, when you are giving this kind of question, the first thing you should do is to look at the variables you are given look at the variables you are requested to find and then find your solution. Now, what are we giving? We are giving the actual length of the world, the actual length of the road is what? AC, which is the actual length, is equal to 1.26 meters. So, if the actual length of the road was one point, that's 1.5 meters, right? A student measured a piece of rope and found that it was 1.26 meter. So what was the student's estimated measurement? The student's estimated measurement is 1.26 meters. So the first thing you do is to find what the error in measurement. And what is the error in measurement? The error in measurement is the actual value minus what? Minus the estimated value, that is 1.26 meters. Now, if you subtract this from this, you find out that the difference is just not too much, and that will give you 0 0.01 meters. So the, the length can be either plus or minus 0 0.01 meter from the estimated what? So the, the, the student estimated plus 0 0.1, 0 0.01 meter. Someone else might say it is 1.24, that is minus or plus. That's why we say it is plus or minus 0 0.1 meter. Now, remember the question, they say, what was the percentage error in the student's measurement? Now, what do you say the percentage error is? Percentage error now is equal to what? The error, the error value divided by the actual value. And this is multiplied by what? 100 to indicate that we are doing what? Percentage. Now, when you multiply that, what will you have? We are going to have this to now become the error is equal to what? 0 0.01 divided by what is the actual value? The actual value is 1.25, which is this. That's the actual measure. Then we multiply this by what? 100. Now, when you multiply 0 0.01 by 100, what is it going to give you? It's just going to give you one because these two zeros will have taken care of these two zeros. So that will give us what? One divided by one point two what two five. So if you calculate that one point two five, we have to reduce that one point two five using a calculator. Now you'll be asked to use ordinary calculator when solving this question. You know you can have you can have your system calculator or you go with your calculator, and that will give you that. But if you don't have calculator. You can simply simplify this into a lower term. Now, to simplify this, what I will simply do is, in order to remove this decimal point, or, or take this decimal place one and here, I have to multiply this by 100. So I'll multiply the numerator by 100 and multiply the denominator by 100. That way, the numerator will give me 100 divided by 1, 2, 5, right? So if you, if you simplify that, you're going to get your solution. Now, what do we do? Let's reduce. If I take five here, I'm going to have 20, right? If I take five here, I'll have 25. 
Because 25 times 5 is going to give me 125, right? Good. Now, if 5 goes here, this will give me what? 4. And if 5 goes here, this is going to give me what? 5. So in your solution, you might not see 1 divided by 1.25. You might see you might see uh, decimals or you see fractions like this. So if you don't have the ability to quickly divide or quickly multiply or, or solve easily to find your uh, the answer, you might not be able to pick your answer correctly and then leave. So if you have four divided by five, the answer might be fraction. And if the answer is not fraction, then you have to change this towards to a decimal. All you need to do is to divide this by one, five divided by four divided by five, right? Four divided by five uh, is not possible. You put zero point, then you put zero here. 40 divided by five is what? Is eight. Eight times five is what? 40. And this will give you zero, zero if you subtract it. So the decimal point will be zero point what? Eight. So whichever we, the answer comes, you can easily manipulate it and then get your what, get your solution. That's why I say these are the easier parts of your jam examination. So don't spend much time on it. Just do what you can and then you solve your answer. And go. So in your option, you might see 0.8% or you might see four divided by five. And how did we get this? We just did have to move this decimal point. And to move this decimal point, we should multiply it by 100. And if you multiply this by 100, it will give you 125. And from there, you can easily uh, solve. Remember, whatever you do to the numerator, you must do to the what? To the denominator. And that is exactly how it goes. So this is just one of the questions you are going to see. In your JAM UTME exam, you might most possibly see one question on everyday mathematics on the second part of this uh, number and numeral. You might see three questions or two. If you are not fortunate, percentage error might be part of them. It's very easy to walk over it and solve other questions. Now, that is that for percentage error. Now, let's turn our attention this time around to simple words, to simple So under everyday mathematics, we are going to consider the simple word, the simple interest. Now, if you look at simple interest thoroughly, you will see that many persons find it to be a simple uh, topic, but you come to see that it is truly what? It is truly simple. So we're going to consider the simple interest. Now, when we talk about the simple interest, the simple interest is the interest that accumulates on uh, a given principal. And that is why when we talk about the simple interest, simple interest is just the interest you get from a principal over a given period of time. It can be four years, it can be five years at the given what, at the given interest. Now, assume that you take your money to the bank, that your money is a principal. The money is meant to accumulate some what, some interest, as time does what goes on. And that is exactly what we call simple interest. Now, when you do that, you should take note of that. Now, when we talk about simple interest, we talk about three things. Simple interest, I'll put it as SI, is equal to the principal multiplied by the rate, multiplied by the time, and all these words multiplied by what? by 100. Now, that is what we call the simple interest. Now, what we, why, we are, why we are dividing this by 100 is because the rate is always in what? The rate is always in what? In percent. So once you divide by 100, you have 100 the percentage in the uh, rate. I hope that is taken. Now let's consider something else. In a question, they might give you, Jan might give you a question and they will ask you to find the amount or the future value 
at the end of the investment period. Let's say I went somewhere at the bank or I went for a business, I invested some given amount of money. And that investment is more of a principal. As time goes on with some given time, maybe two or three years, I'm expected to get some value for that my money as what well as interest accumulated for the investment I've made. So what is the future value of that money I've put in? The amount or the future value, I want you to take note because you might also see this. The amount or what or future value of any investment is equal to the principal, the money you put into that business plus the what plus the interest it has what it has accumulated. That is the future value of any investment you make. So when you make an investment, the investment will always have the principal plus the what? Plus the interest. So the interest, remember that the interest is always the principal rate times time divided by what? 100. So who will take the interest to be that? So this amount will now be equal to the principal plus the principal rate times time divided by what? 100. And that is the amount or the future value you get for a given investment. Now, when you simplify this, you're going to have P to be equal to P is common, you bring out P plus what? RT divided by what? By 100. You must have been seeing this uh, equation somehow, somewhere. And that is the equation for the future value of any what of any investment. So when you put in an investment, the future value of your investment is what is this. Now take note of this. In any exams you go to, you jam my ask you to calculate the future value of an investment, or they might ask you to calculate the amount for that investment. So don't be confused. The future value is just the principal plus the what plus the interest. So what you all, all need to do is to find the interest for that principal and add it to the initial what principal, and that will give you the future value of your what of your investment. Now let's look at how we we'll see uh, or take a question that has to do with what with simple interest. We're going to look at uh, just one question. Just one question, very interesting question. And this question is a jam UTME question. You might most likely see this question in your exams. No, so having done this, let's look at the question. The question says you should find the principal, find the principal which amounts to 5,500 Naira at Simple interest in five years at two percent per annum. Now, that question says you should do what? Find the simple interest. You should find the simple interest at this what? Find the simple, find the amount to this principal at simple interest in five years at 2% per what? Per annum. So how do you solve that question? 
And when you're giving that question to solve, the first thing you look at is they've already given you the amount that you get. You are asked to find the principal which amounts to this at simple interest in five years at two percent per annum. So when you are given any question in mathematics, be it physics or chemistry, the first thing you ask yourself is, what am I asked to look for? What you are asked to look for, what am I giving, what am I not giving, and what am I asked to look for? Now, in this question, we are giving the rate, and we say the rate is what? 2%. We are giving the time, and we say the time is what? 5 years. Now, are we giving the principal? We are not giving the principal. And the principal is what we are what we are looking for. You are asked to find the principal which amounts to this. But we are giving the amount. We're giving the future value. This is the future value we'll have at this year and after this uh, what 2%. So we are already giving the amount or the future value. The future value is 5,000 watts, 500. That means if I say the given principal for a 2% for five years, I will be able to get this future value. So what is the word, the principal? That is it. So you ask yourself, what is the principal? So you see how tricky this question is? You are asked to find the future value. Now remember that formula that we say the future value is equal to the principal plus the what plus the interest. So the principal plus the interest, which is principal raised times what time divided by 100. And this is equal to the future what value. So we've been given the future value. The principal here will now be one plus what? P plus RT, because we're taking P out divided by 100, and this is the future what value. So what are you giving and what are you looking for? We are given this, we are given this and this, we are asked to look for what for this. So you see, if you don't know this, you might find it very difficult. Some will start searching for the interest, finding the interest, and you are not asked to look for the interest. You are asked to look for the word, the principal. Some might always be confused and say, but they didn't give us simple interest now. But that is what you are what giving. You are asked to find the amount that will accumulate to that. So haven't seen this, all you need to do is just to what? To simplify. So all you need to do is to make P the subject of what? Formula. Now let's take this back to this. If we make T subject of formula, we're going to divide all these pieces by one plus RT divided by 100. And they will divide all these places by one plus RT divided by 100. If you do that, this will just simply clear this. And then our P will be equal to the future value divided by one plus RT divided by 100. So if we simplify this, we should be able to get a solution. So our principal now will be equal to what is the future value? 5,500, right? Divided by one plus the uh, rate is what? Two multiplied by the time is what? Five divided by 100. And that is what we are already what? Giving. You already put, you've already seen the 100 there. So there is no need of putting the 100. So having done that, we are going to clear this. We don't need this any longer. So how we seen that, the next thing we will now do is to simplify this. Our principal will now be equal to 5500 divided by, this times this will give you one plus 10 divided by 100. So this will clear this, and then we'll have what? We'll have our P to be equal to 5500 divided by one plus what? one divided by 10. Now you take the LCM of this. This will give you 10, right? 10 divided by one is 10. 10 times one will give us 10 plus 10 divided by 10 is one. One, 